does the elemental diet work for SIFO or dysbiosis? From a scientific perspective, we know that elemental dieting works for SIBO, impressive data for IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, data for eosinophilic esophagitis, and for RA, rheumatoid arthritis. Do we know for sure if it helps with dysbiosis and with SIFO? No, because there has been no formal study. Now, my strong suspicion is yes for both of these. Now, why is that? Well, the elemental diet you could criticize may fuel candida because of the carbohydrates. However, because the elemental diet will absorb in the first three feet of the 22 foot small intestine, the majority of the small intestine will not come into contact with these carbohydrates. Also bear in mind that when you go from the stomach and transition into the small intestine, that's when the chyme or the contents are the most acidic and therefore the least prone for any sort of dysbiosis or overgrowth to occur because you have that acidic chyme coming out of the stomach. And if you just draw a line from the stomach to colon, the bacterial count as well as the fungal count in the stomach is the lowest and it's the highest at the end of the colon or the large intestine. And it gradually increases as you go down the line as there's less acid present and it's an environment that's more conducive to bacterial and fungal overgrowth. So because coming out of the stomach, the elemental solution, including the carbs, will absorb in the first three feet and that's going to be somewhat protected by the acid, then I think it's very unlikely that elemental diets will feed candida or fungal overgrowth. With one exception, if someone has suspected nasopharyngeal candida, meaning they have fungus in the upper throat, in the nasal cavity, then this is where drinking things like sugars, uh, sugar sweetened beverages, consuming simple sugars like bananas, consuming the elemental diet may flare those situations. So that would be the one exception. So unless you're having things like a lot of throat clearing, a lot of mucus up here, then I would not be worried about it if you're thinking you have small intestinal or colonic candida or fungus. And the same exact rules apply for dysbiosis. Dysbiosis certainly will occur in the small intestine, but because it's more likely to occur mid toward the end of the small intestine and not in that first three feet, then we should see a favorable impact from the elemental diet because again, the contents absorb in the first three-ish feet and that allows the remaining 19 feet of your small intestine to rest and repair and this is why we see things like reduction of symptoms, a reduction of inflammation, and even improvements in some autoimmune conditions like RA. So we don't know for sure, but due to all of those factors, it's likely to help. And also remember that when you give that 19 feet, remember the first three it'll absorb, total length 22 feet, so the remaining 19 feet are going to have a chance to rest. This can also be immunomodulatory, meaning if part of your symptoms are coming from an immune response where there's gut leakage, then that has a chance to calm down, heal, repair, and reduce some of what might be inflammatory and immune in nature, which is driving your symptoms. Mm -hmm.